What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about why you self-sabotage and how you can stop. So you probably already have a pretty good idea of what self-sabotaging is if you click this video, uh, but I'm just going to quickly break down what it is before I talk about why it is that you do it and also how you can stop. So when I think about self-sabotaging, there's a picture that comes to mind and it's an image of somebody riding a bicycle and they have like a stick in their hand and they put the stick in the spokes of like the front tire of the bicycle. And if you understand how a bicycle works, uh, that's going to th probably throw you off the bicycle. And that image kind of encapsulates the energy of what self-sabotaging is. Self-sabotaging is when people get in the way of their own success and prevent themselves from accomplishing their goals, either in their career or their personal life or what have you. And this usually affects your mental health and your ability to be successful in whatever it is that you have this tendency to self-sabotage in. So the, the most broad scope of an example that probably anybody watching this video can relate to is you might have a bunch of goals and you probably know what it is you have to do to get those goals. Maybe you want to be able to lift a certain amount of weight in the gym or be a, you know, a certain aesthetic, or you want to have a certain amount of money in your bank account, have a certain amount of financial success in your career, in your business, what have you. You probably know what it is that you have to do, more or less, to get to those goals. Yet sometimes you do things that get in the way of those goals. And the more you do things that get in the way, the more those goals become like a distant dream rather than anything that is actually likely to be occurring in your reality. So self-sabotaging can really start to become this snowball that builds up momentum and just like shits all over your dream life and all your goals if you let it, if you're not careful, if you don't recognize why you do it and how you can stop doing it. So that's what this video is all about. So if you have goals and you know what it is that you have to do to get there, why are you not doing those things to accomplish those goals? So I'll start with the first thing that you should address or at least reflect on and see if this applies to you. Do you have enough clarity and vision relative to these goals? You need to get familiar with what it is that you should be doing to accomplish those goals. Even if it's not with the utmost certainty that this is what I have to do, just know that this is generally the things that I should be doing to get closer to these goals. And I'll try them out and if they don't work, well, I'll make changes. So you have to have clarity on what those goals are, what it is that you should be doing to get closer to them. If you answer yes to the question of, are you clear? Do you have enough clarity on what your goals are and how it is that you should get there? That is step one. You need to be able to answer that question yes. If you answer that question with a no, go ahead and get clear Decide, you know, get clear on what your values are, get clear on what it is that your goals are. You can try to get as specific as you want with the actual goal itself, but when it comes to what it is that you have to do with getting towards that goal, it can be more general. Just make sure you have clear, identifiable, doable action steps that you can do every day to get closer to that goal. Once you have that in place, that is avoiding the first phase of self-sabotage, right? Of just not really having any clarity and not really doing anything about it. That is one way that people self-sabotage. The next way, which is the most common way, is you know what you have to do. You have the goals, you know what they are, you know what you have to do more or less to get to those goals, yet you're just not doing them. You might be thinking, oh, you know, sheer power of will and, and laziness. That's one aspect of it, sure. Maybe you you know, maybe you can use some more power of will in just doing the things that you have to do, that you know you have to do to get to your goals. However, a much more fundamental reason that you self-sabotage is because you don't actually believe that you are the type of person who can accomplish those goals. Your fundamental belief systems are not in alignment with the goals that you have and that's why you're not doing what it takes to accomplish them. Because you don't identify as the type of person who can accomplish those goals. And not like a conscious identification, like subconsciously, you have a belief system that the type of person that I am is not the type of person who works out every day. And that's why you're not accomplishing your fitness goals. 
the type of belief system you have is that you're not the type of person who can be successful as an entrepreneur. And that's why you skip over the one hour of uh, daily work on your website that you've scheduled for yourself. Because even though you know what you have to do, you're, you're skipping it, you're not doing it because fundamentally you don't actually believe that you could be successful at that goal. And that is the biggest reason that people self-sabotage. And this is very important not to overlook because this is where the issue needs to be addressed. You need to address the issue of your self-sabotaging at the level of your identity. You need to start to become the type of person on the level of your belief systems about yourself you need to become the type of person that can accomplish those goals that you have. Because once you start to identify as the type of person who doesn't skip workouts, you're going to be much more likely to work out every day. Once that becomes a part of your identity, right? Identities are, are, are malleable. You can, you're shifting your identity every day. Every action that you do is a vote for the type of person that you are becoming, right? Your identity is not like, chiseled in stone you it's very malleable so start to shift your identity just from your awareness now that you're aware of the fact that this is a phenomenon start to consciously shift into the type of person who can accomplish those goals and then validate that identity by doing the things that that type of person would do so start identifying what the type of person who has the, the dream body you want and then do the things that that person would do. That person would not miss workouts. Start to identify with the type of person who has a successful blog. What would that person do? They would upload blog posts every day. They would make their blog better according to the way that it's being interacted with by, uh, with the public. You get the point. Start to identify with the type of person who would accomplish the goals that you have and then do what that person would do to validate that identity. Because there's a, a belief system that you have right now that is enabling your self-sabotaging activities. Your belief systems are what is letting you get in your own way. If you stop believing you're the kind of person that skips workouts and skips meal prep to you know just go grab fast food instead... You're not going to do that. You're going to stick to your plan. You're going to take the action that you know is required to hit your goals. And it's important to also, I'll mention, it's important not to be goal oriented. You have to work. I'll throw up a, a graphic here. You have to work from the inside out. Start at the level of your identity. Then that will affect your process. And then that will yield your outcomes. Most people know what outcomes they want but they're not making any changes on their identity. They know the outcomes they want and they, they try to work from the outside in. They say, okay, this is what I want, so this is how I'm gonna get it. And then they don't even recognize that that like core, the level of identity is a variable in this equation at all. But you really, you have to start at the core and work your way out, change who you are. That is going to affect the action that you take and that will just yield the results. The results will, will come all by themselves if you just focus on the first two. Shifting your identity and then moving to shift your process according to that identity. Now, the biggest obstacle to this uh, process of trying to shift our identity and then shift our process, our action steps, and achieve better outcomes, the biggest obstacle to this is our old identity, Right. The, the, the whole point here is that the biggest reason that people self-sabotage, that people get in their own way, is because they don't believe that they can actually achieve what it is they want to achieve because their identity is out of alignment with that. So the biggest obstacle to shifting into a new identity, one that is in alignment with achieving your goals, is overcoming the old one. So fundamentally, the old identity is why people self-sabotage. But like, why is it that they have that identity? Why is it that you believe you can't have a business that makes six figures? It can be really powerful to address where some of those beliefs came from. 
So a lot of times it goes back to our childhood. That's when we're most impressionable. That's where we start to create our worldview. We might hear from you know our parents that we have to go to school to get a good job and now that gets rid of the idea that we can create a good job by autodidacting by learning on our own by starting a business that we're not necessarily qualified for with a degree from a academic institution so that's just an example it can really serve you to become aware of when you started to create this identity that made you think that you were not capable of achieving those goals. And awareness alone is curative. Once you become aware of, oh, this is where I, this is why I believe this about myself. And once you become aware of the reason that you started believing that, you can start to see through it as like a facade. There's no reason that you have to have that identity. But the other thing is that your identity has been reinforced. There's a good chance that you've been reinforcing your identity, the one that's out of alignment with your goals for a long time with some self-sabotaging behaviors. So what are what do some of these behaviors look like? Uh, maybe not going to bed on time and getting adequate rest to be energized for the next day. Maybe it's, you know, skipping your workouts, uh, eating unhealthy. Maybe it's not doing the scheduled work that you had. Maybe it's spending a lot of time scrolling mindlessly on social media or playing a lot of video games, or maybe it's smoking or drinking, uh, whatever it might be, you can see that something that all of these uh, have in common, all of these self-sabotaging behaviors, is that they have a high propensity to be made into a habit. And they kind of just fall into our like automatic behavior. We don't even really think about them. They're subconsciously done. So it's important to address them systematically as habits to be able to break those habits and implement better ones because the action that you take in your life is what is going to validate your identity to yourself. So to be able to be somebody who stops missing workouts, you have to break that habit. And once you start consistently working out uh, over a, a longer period of time, you're going to start identifying with the type of person that doesn't miss workouts consciously and then it's validated through your experience, through the action that you take. So a very helpful, practical way to do this is to go and check out my video on the best trick to being more consistent with your good habits. And another video I have also called Biggest Lessons Learned from Atomic Habits uh, by James Clear. And if you're still having a bit of a hard time kicking some habits after those videos, you can go ahead and get the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. I highly recommend it. It's one of the best books on habits that I've ever read. It's just like packed full value on every page. Uh, a very easy read and I highly recommend it. So now you know why you self-sabotage, right? It's this old identity and it's these belief systems that have shaped this old identity. And then you have gone ahead and validated that through the action that you take. So just to wrap up, go ahead and become aware of when it is that you started forming these beliefs and kind of see through them. See the fact that these belief systems are a fallacy, right? They're, they're not necessarily true. They're only true because you are making them true by living in that way, living in alignment with your belief system. And you can go ahead and make a whole new identity true by living in alignment with a new belief system and a way that you can do that and help make that process uh, more easy and less painstaking is by understanding your habits more so that you can shift into a better version of yourself. So that's it for today's video. Now you guys know why you self-sabotage and how you can stop. I hope this was very valuable to you and I hope you go on to achieve all the goals that you might have beyond your wildest dreams and live your dream life. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a good one.